All right, Steve Novella again from the Skeptic's Guide to the Universe podcast. Uh, we're going to talk on this video today about confirmation bias. What is it? Confirmation bias isn't so much a logical fallacy as it is a cognitive bias. It's a bias in the way our brains process information, the way we investigate the world, and the way we build our beliefs. Kind of important, right? If, if that process doesn't work perfectly, if it's biased in one direction, we would need to know about that, wouldn't we? Uh, that has a dramatic effect on what we think is real. So what is confirmation bias? Well, as the name implies, we are biased towards confirming beliefs that we already have. It's also biased towards belief that beliefs that we want to have. So we may have things we want to be true. We're not willing to say that we believe them, but we really want to believe them. And we will take any evidence as sufficient evidence to then say, okay, now I, I could say that that's true because I want it to be true. So we confirm what we already believe or what we want to believe. And, but it's more than that. So how do we, how do we conf, you know, falsely confirm uh, such beliefs? Well, there's a number of processes that are at work. So at a somewhat more conscious level, we seek out evidence that confirms our beliefs, that confirms our theories or our hypotheses. That's our instinct is to look for evidence to show that what we believe is true. What we should be doing is the opposite. This is how science works. We, sh we should be looking for evidence that disconfirms our beliefs, that proves our beliefs wrong. But we instinctively do not do that. Um, in science, we, we hold on to beliefs that survive multiple attempts at proving them wrong. And we say, okay, this is surviving dedicated attempts at proving it wrong. So it's probably a reasonable hypothesis for now. But psychologically in our everyday lives, we seek out evidence that only confirms what we already believe. Um, but it goes beyond that. On a subconscious level, and this is where it gets really powerful, we are more likely to notice things that support our beliefs, to remember them, and to accept them as pieces of evidence. Meanwhile, we either don't notice, don't remember, or find some reason to reject information that disconfirms our beliefs, right? So if you come across something that seems to contradict your belief, well, that's an exception, right? We say, well, that's the, no, it's not an exception. It's data, but your brain treats it like an exception because you're already assuming that the rule you want to be true is true, right? It's only exception to your belief, to your rule, rather than saying that's data. I have to reconsider my belief, right? So let's say you believe that all people who are blonde, you know, are also rude, right? So every time somebody with blonde hair is rude to you, that confirms your belief. Uh, and you will, again, you will notice that when it happens, you'll remember it. It'll become part of your narrative, part of your blonde people are rude narrative. And if you meet a rude, a blonde person who's really nice, you think, oh, that's an, that's an exception. You're, you know, that's, a rare, nice blonde person. No, it isn't. It's a, just a blonde person who doesn't fit your rule. It's evidence against your rule. Um, you, you can encounter a lot of this with things like belief in astrology. You know, you have this narrative about, oh, uh, uh, Sagittarians are this way, and you notice whenever people seem to fit into that pattern and dismiss when they don't, or just don't even remember it. Or with the notion that uh, the, the full moon is associated with more bizarre activity. So um, you know, I've even been with people where something happens and usually go, oh my God, is there a full moon out there tonight? No? Okay, they forget about it and they go on with their lives. If there were a full moon, then they would remember it. Then that would become a piece of data that confirms their pre-existing belief. That's confirmation bias. So essentially, confirmation bias is working in the background, noticing and gathering data to confirm beliefs that we want to be true. And what this does over time is create the powerful illusion that the evidence supports our beliefs. But that's only because we've curated and in a very biased fashion gathered only the evidence to support our beliefs. Uh, but it does really create that very, very powerful illusion of knowledge, an illusion of evidence. 
And that's more dangerous than just ignorance, right? The illusion of knowledge is more powerful and more dangerous than just not having information because it leads us to believe things that aren't true. It, it powerfully sets us into those beliefs and makes us resistant to new evidence or to changing our minds as new evidence comes in or as we get more evidence or just aligning our beliefs with reality. We don't instinctively align our beliefs with reality. We align them with what we emotionally, culturally, subjectively want to be true. And confirmation bias basically is the process that makes that happen. But once you're aware of it, you can impose a filter on that, right? You could say, well, I, I, it feels to me like this is the case. It feels to me that all blonde people are rude, but I know that could just be confirmation bias. So now I have to back up and look at more objective scientific data. Don't just accept your own subjective perception, your own anecdotes, because they are hopelessly biased. You need objective data where you look at all of the, the relevant pieces of information and you look at them in a statistical way, not just in a subjective way. That really is, in my opinion, you know, understanding and compensating for uh, confirmation bias is one of the cornerstones of critical thinking. If you're not engaged in compensating for that, there's no way you're really going to be able to navigate you know, our complex world and be able to make sense of what's going on out there.